Today, I am excited that we're going to be talking about fitness and wellness in the Caribbean community. And we're joined by Laurel Martineau, IFBB Pro, fitness guru, and she's just coming off of some prestigious shows that she has been on. So we are excited to get started today. Stay tuned for Carib Nation is up next. Today we are joined by Laurel Martineau, IFBB Pro. IFBB is the International Federation of Bodybuilding and Fitness. And she's just off of two prestigious shows, Mr. Olympia and the Arnold Sports Classic, which are phenomenal shows. And to have a Caribbean representative in those shows representing the broader Caribbean is amazing. Laurel, welcome. Thanks, Abby. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Tell me a little bit about what got you into fitness and wellness. Well, honestly, okay, so I got into working out about maybe like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm originally from Trinidad and Tobago, and we have this cultural festival called Carnival. Mm -hmm. And I'm an avid participant in Carnival, playing mm -hmm. mass. Mm -hmm. And we have like these elaborate costumes that we wear. Um, it's really an elaborate piece of art, mm -hmm. right? And I have to show my body in this elaborate piece of art. Definitely. I consider my body my work of art. So to get my body to match this you know, elaborate costume, I want to present the best package possible. Mm -hmm. So that start got me into working out, you know, trying to attain the best physique possible. And each year, I kind of like hit a new milestone and, you know, got a better look and I kind of got deeper and deeper into it. Mm -hmm. And eventually that led me into bodybuilding and bodybuilding led me into competing. So I exercise too for carnival, but I don't look like you. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it that you do to get to this level of fitness? Like what, what is the workout regimen? What does it look like on a day to day for you? Okay, so it took a while for me to get where I am okay. today. Because mm -hmm. when I first started off, I started off by reading magazines and I saw these girls and their physiques. And I was like, I want to look like that. You know, they had more of a muscular build. Mm -hmm. And back then, it wasn't as popular. And people really didn't go for that muscular look. But it appealed to me. Mm -hmm. And so I would take these workouts that I see in these magazines and try, you know, different things that I, you know, that they suggest. And in trying them, I saw my body transform. Mm. And in seeing the transformation of my body, it became addictive. And so I started to put more effort into it. I started to do more research and read about it. And I found more efficient ways to sculpt my physique into the way that I wanted to look. Right. Um, and so that led primarily into like lifting weights, weight resistance training. Mm -hmm. Because before, just to lose weight, you know, I'd, I'd be the cardio bunny, you know? run, go on the um, elliptical, you know, do a bunch of cardio. But to get this sculpture in your body that you desire, it really required resistance training. So that mm -hmm. was a big part of it. Got it. And so once you started to sculpt your physique, you realize, okay, well, I reached another level, but there was more. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's where the nutrition came into play, mm. right? So that's when I realized I had to eat a certain way for my body to look a certain way. And so I started to do a lot more research and started to speak to people about, you know, the nutrition aspects of it. And once you start doing the experimentation, you realize, okay, this plays a big role in what your physique is going to look like. Okay. And so now I, so I eat better. Well, when I say better is, you know, growing up in the Caribbean, there's a certain... We have Caribbean food, right. pretty much, right? And so you eat a certain way. You eat like a lot of rice, you eat a lot of fried food. You, like there's- A lot of butter. Yeah, you know what I mean? That they mm -hmm. put into their foods. And so when I learn about like eating better, I realized, you know, this wasn't the way to go. And if I wanted to sculpt the physique that I wanted, I had to change how I cooked my food mm -hmm. um, and the things that I ate in general. So fried chicken? No. No. Oh, okay, okay. I stay away from fried food 
period. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, well, that might be why my body is not where it needs to be for carnival. Because there's a lot of fried chicken that goes into my diet on a regular basis. We'll talk a little bit more about that afterwards. But so you specifically are a figure model. Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about what that means, what that is, and what other categories they are. Okay. So in bodybuilding, bodybuilding is the general name given um, to the sport. Um, and there are different categories. There's a bikini division, figure, um, fitness, and women's physique. This is on the women's side of things. Mm -hmm. um, so, and the differentiating factor is the degree of muscularity. Mm -hmm. So, bik a bikini model would have is someone who is toned, you know, not as much um, muscle, you know, n no striations in their abs, you know, a nice round perky butt, you know, mm -hmm. pretty much looks cute in a bikini. Mm -hmm. um, the figure athlete has more muscularity. Mm -hmm. um, they look for balance and symmetry within the body, you know, like well-rounded shoulders, you know, straight, like, your abs don't have to be striated, but like abs, um, full quads and hamstrings, wow. right? Mm -hmm. And then there's fi fitness is similar to figure, except they have a, um, a gymnastic aspect in there okay. where they have to do an actual routine. Mm -hmm. And then there's women's physique, which is the highest degree of muscularity. So you would see those, you know, those muscular, I guess, bodybuilding bodies mm -hmm. for a woman's physique athlete. So you're considered an athlete? Yes. All right. So yes. as an athlete, you compete and you go into these competitions, mm -hmm. which led up to this year, you did two really big competitions. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the work that went into that and what that felt like achieving those two large milestones. OK, so the two competitions that I did last year, September, I did um, the Mr. Olympia, mm -hmm. which is the most prestigious competition in bodybuilding. So it's like the Super Bowl of bodybuilding. Okay. So this is the pinnacle that you try to reach in the sport. All athletes who um, compete within the NPC or IFBB um, Federation, mm -hmm. their main goal, or majority of athletes, if you want to get to the top, is to compete in this competition. Mm -hmm. So I had the privilege of being an, as, um, a competitor in this competition last year. The second um, competition that I did was this year, which is the Arnold Sports Classic. And this one is the second most prestigious competition, but you have to be invited. Mm -hmm. So they look at your, your ranking, your competition ranking, and they choose 15 girls out of hundreds of applicants to actually participate in wow. this one. So this was a, another major feat for me mm -hmm. to just get the invitation to this competition. Mm -hmm. um, going into them, the, the training is intense yeah. because you're going up against the best of the best within the sport. You know, at the amateur level, you find different ranges of you know, athletes in there. When you reach a professional level, the competition is tough, mm -hmm. but to get to the Olympia or to the Arnold is like, this is the best of the best. So you right. have to put your, your absolute best forward. Mm -hmm. So there's no like cheating on the diets. You start, I start dieting a minimum of 16 to 20 weeks out. Wow. So where um, dieting, I mean like I watch what I eat, like I have a plan, a meal plan that I follow to a T. There's no cheating. I have workouts that, you know, if they, I have lagging body parts, I try to work on them to bring them up mm -hmm. so that they will show well on stage and I'll be competitive. Mm -hmm. um, you don't miss workouts, you know, you get your cardiovascular activity in. Um, training is just pretty much intense for the minimum 16 to 20 weeks. Wow. Now, there's some athletes who could train for a shorter period of time, but I think in a shorter period of time, it makes your training a, lot, a little more stressful. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I try to spread it out as long as possible so I can bring in my best physique and be in the best mood when I actually step on stage. And y when you talk about training, you know, and being an athlete, it's you, but there's a team around you. Who mm -hmm. else works with you to get you ready? Okay. So fortunately, I do have a team around okay. me because some athletes go into this sport by themselves or maybe wow. just them and the significant other. So I train with, um... Uh, I have a personal trainer mm -hmm. who's also my coach. His name is Luis Valdez of Rock Built Fitness. Mm -hmm. And so he has, a, you know, a bunch of other athletes that he trains. Okay. Um, different levels, and but they're a very supportive group of people. You know, as athletes, they, we all can, we all know what each other is going through and we'll try to support each other going into a competition. So 
I have a bunch of friends, males, females, who actually compete, who support me, supported me on my journey to the Olympia. The Olympia is actually held in Las Vegas. A bunch of them flew over to Las Vegas to support me. And the honor is in um, Columbus, Ohio. They, they also came to Ohio. Anytime in a down mood, they're there to cheer me up. They're there to push me through workouts. Mm -hmm. um, I just have a really good support system, not just for my team, but also for my friends and my families mm -hmm. to get me through, you know, my intense training. Yeah, and you're talking on a great point there in terms of like, what keeps you motivated? Because mm -hmm. this must be hard and stressful and strenuous. What keeps you going? It, it, it is, it is. I, I would be lying if I said it wasn't. Um, I guess I always stay focused on my goal. I know what I'm trying to attain. I know there's not always going to be, it's not going to be a, you know, a great journey. You're going to have low points. So having a great support system keeps me motivated because anytime I feel like I'm ready to quit, I'm ready to throw it in, you know, there's someone around me to remind me, you know, how strong I could be and to just keep me going. Mm -hmm. Um, that and just pretty much knowing that I signed up for this. This is my goal, you know, and so I need to enjoy this journey to this stage, you know, and show, it gives me a way to show the best that I could be. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So it's kind of like a personal achievement for me. So I kind of like want to push myself. So mm -hmm. that alone keeps me motivated. Yeah. Are there a lot of other Caribbean people when you are on the stage, when you're in these platforms? Are there a lot of people from the Caribbean? Mm -hmm. There are some Caribbean people on the professional level, yes. But on the Olympia, to get to the Olympia stage, there wasn't. And so, um, I'm a, I was born in Trinidad, but I'm a U.S. citizen. So when I sign up for competitions, they usually put me from USA. But I'm a full-blown Trini, and I right. love representing Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. So any opportunity I get to represent Trinidad and Tobago, I'm there. So going on the stage, I was the only Caribbean person in the figure division. So naturally i want to represent trinidad and tobago mm -hmm. so just to have a caribbean athlete up there it's, it's something you don't see often mm -hmm. right so there as a matter of fact you could probably count the number of caribbean athletes that actually made it to that level mm -hmm. so yeah it's not something you see a lot of caribbean get into That's but you but you are seeing them a lot more and at least i know on the amateur level a lot of caribbean people you know who follow me have reached out to me you know tell me that you know it's something that they're interested in and they love seeing caribbean people do it so you know i try to encourage them to actually keep on moving oh good and as you talk about you know other people getting involved and that support and mentorship that you provide as young people might be interested in this sport what are some of the challenges that you faced getting into it or maintaining this sport and how did you overcome some of those challenges okay so staying motivated was um a hard one it was a challenging one um but i tell people like motivation comes and goes so you have to keep on feeding it just like you work out to stay in shape you know you bathe to stay clean you pray to maintain your faith you have to keep on finding ways to motivate yourself mm. so where it is by listening to inspirational videos um speakers reading books staying around motivational people you have to be proactive about staying motivated mm -hmm. so every day you should try to find a way to keep yourself motivated mm -hmm. so that helps you along your journey another challenge i found was um maintaining relationships, mm -hmm. social relationships especially. Mm -hmm. Within this sport, there comes a time when you get so focused on your goal that it affects going out with friends, you know, going out with the family, going to birthdays, going to restaurants, and you know, cel having celebrations. Because you can't pick up and go to the restaurant to celebrate a birthday because you have to eat your food. You can't eat the food from the restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. And so, Sometimes it becomes easier to just decline the invitations and then your friends get upset with you as to why you're yeah. not coming out with them. So that social aspect of it becomes challenging. But your f when you have friends who understand what your goal is, it makes it easier, but a lot of people aren't as understanding, right. it, at least in the beginning, when they don't, they don't see, their, your goal is not their goals. Mm -hmm. So just, um, why can't you come out with us is something you know that they would take to heart right you have any times when people like doubt that you can make it or doubt that you can do what you say you're gonna do yes mm -hmm. all the time uh -huh. all the time a matter of fact um i experienced that uh, in my last competition prep for the honor 
So going into the honor, so the honor is by invitation only, and they publicize a list of the invited athletes um, 10 weeks prior. Um, as I said, usually when I prep for a show, I try to give myself a minimum of 16 weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't in competition shape when the list came out. I actually just came out of a procedure, operational procedure, so I was in recovery, and this list came out. And when the list came out, I was in so much shock, I wanted to faint. And the first thing I thought was, can I get ready in time? Because I was already at a setback with a short period of time. So I called one of my coaches. I was like, oh my God, is this possible? Is this possible? And he was like, oh, well, you know, and going into it, I kind of doubted myself as to if I could get ready. And some people were like, no, just don't do it. You, you, you're not going to be ready in time. Like, you, you're not going to have your best package. Mm -hmm. And I was like, once my coach said, we could do this, I was like, that's all I needed to hear. And I was like, let's go. I was like, forget what the naysayers are saying, you know. If I believe I could do this, I'm just going to work as hard as possible to get my best package and see how it goes, you know. Mm -hmm. But had I listened, ultimately when I stepped on that stage, it was my best package. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, this prep really showed me what I was made of, what you know what I mean? Yeah. And had I listened to the naysayers, I would have never known how strong I could be. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the, the issues that we see in, in the Caribbean with young people, too, is that, you know, we see increasing obesity, mm -hmm. um, increasing cardiovascular disease and other chronic diseases, diabetes and other issues that are tied to diet and exercise mm -hmm. or fitness. Um, so I'm interested in hearing what are you seeing in the community? Do you see your friends eating healthy, not too healthy? What, what are you seeing? The people who are close to me, I see a change in their behavior because once they see, because I pretty much lead by example, and eventually they will start to change their habits, even if it's in small ways. Because I always say bodybuilding is an extreme sport, so I don't expect people to adopt all the things that I do. Mm -hmm. However, I do see differences, just even with my coworkers. Like my coworkers now, they would see me walking around with water all the time. So they'd be like, okay, I'm going to try to drink more water today, you know? Mm -hmm. Or they would try to get. Um, more steps in or take a walk during the day. Mm -hmm. So I see changes um, with the people that I can touch on a regular basis. Um, however, within the community, I think there needs to be a lot more education mm -hmm. because people think they may be doing the right things, but they're really not. And it's simple changes. Like you don't have to make a whole, uh, make a one eight, you know, a complete 180 to have a healthier lifestyle. I think simple changes make a big difference. Mm -hmm. So people don't realize that just drinking more water will help them. Mm -hmm. Moving more will help them. So like taking steps short day. Um, certain ingredients they put in their foods, eliminating those ingredi ingredients, eliminating certain foods from their diets will go a long way. Mm -hmm. um, in the Caribbean, there's no real resource for that type of information. Got it. Mm -hmm. So I think once the people are more educated on things, I think you will start to see a shift in right. the population. Well, one of the things that I need some education on is how do I find time to fit fitness in my busy schedule, right? Because I work a lot, you know, I have a business, mm -hmm. I do a lot, and I don't find the time to st have consistent exercise in my day-to-day, -day, right? That's a big challenge. So I think, I'd love for you to educate me about some exercises that I could do within my schedule, right? Okay. So when we come back, hopefully, Laurel is gonna be showing me some exercises. Are you up for the challenge? Sure. Awesome, <laughs> so stay tuned. Come back. We're coming back soon, Carib Nation, with some exercises, so get ready. Exercise and eating healthy, that's the best thing for your body. The day you stop smoking, you start to reduce your risks. Support smoke-free public spaces. Love your body. Celebrate Caribbean Wellness Day. Make every day a wellness day. Gotta take good care of yourself, nothing's better. And every single day should be Caribbean Wellness Day. Join the wellness revolution. Live a healthy lifestyle. Brought to you by Caribbean Wellness Day. Welcome back. And I am really excited because, as I said, I work full time, so it's hard to keep up with exercise. And I'm hoping, Laura, that you could help me figure out 
how to get some more fitness in my life. That's no problem. I have a full-time job myself. Where I actually sit at a desk for about eight to nine hours a day. Mm -hmm. So getting moving can be a challenging sometimes, but there are things you can do at your desk with your chair that can get the blood flowing. Okay. All right, so we can go do a couple of things. Um, we can start with squats. If you have your chair handy, you know, you just sit back, have your bun, touch it bottom of your chair, and fire up some squats. Okay. Any exercise you're doing in work so you wouldn't start breaking into a sweat. You know, you can do three sets of 12 reps, and but you'll get your blood flowing. Okay, good. All right, so that's for our squats. So I won't be too sweaty. No, you won't be too sweaty. <laughs> but you will be working those muscles. Okay, all right, cool. Then we can go into some arm exercises. You can do with your triceps. You can do some tricep dips. So sit into your chair, scoot your legs forward, and just sit down. This is my weak point. Like I find my arms are what I would call the least. Working them a couple times a week will strengthen them. So in about a couple weeks, you will find yourself being a lot stronger. Okay. Okay? Yes. And it gets all that little gobble gobble that hangs in the back there. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Okay, so for our ladies who always want to, you know, put the touch, we can do some step ups. So I'll just turn my chair around. If your office allows it and you have some, some privacy, you just step up into your chair. Make sure you squeeze, you squeeze your glute muscles, your butt. As you step up, you want to make it a little bit more advanced. When you step up, you kick back Ooh. and you squeeze your Ooh. Yes, I'm feeling that one. There's always a little more challenging way. Once you get used to the exercise, you want to challenge yourself a little bit more. Okay. Without the step ups, if you can't step up and you want to get the um, the kickbacks in, you can just pull some kickbacks. Well, this one I can do easily. If you can't step up in the chair, this is the easy one to do. Try to get 15 to 20 on each side, squeeze the glutes each time. And then of course, the yeah, push ups. I had a challenge where I was doing actually 50 push ups a day just to maintain some consistency. So drop to the floor. Ready? Okay. Alright. I hear some pushing. So is there I know is there an easier way to do push up? Well, yeah. So you can go drop down to your knees. Uh -huh. You know, keep your butt upper body aligned. Alright. So if you don't have the upper body strength to do push ups yet, this is another version you can try. This might help me a little bit sweaty. <laughs> And there you go. It's something, it's short, sweet, you know, get 15 reps, maybe 20 reps, three sets in. In between your breaks, you know, you don't have to do all at once, but just to get your blood flowing. Because the more you move, you know, the more they have to be. So that worked my hands, my your triceps, triceps, your quads, my quads, your butt. my butt. Mm -hmm. I got a little bit of smiling in too. <laughs> it's good for, for energy, right? Yes. So that was really good. But you know, one of the things you mentioned was consistency. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the importance of consistency. Discipline and consistency are two main elements you need to be successful. So if you get started on a workout program, you have to be consistent with it. You can't dedicate just one day a week and then come off for a month and then just try again. You have to, in order to see results, you have to be consistent. Okay. And that's where doing these in the office every day might help me build consistency. That, and that's where you would see the change. Consistency, it helps you get that change. Okay. I'm sweaty. Those push-ups did it for me. I'm a little bit out of breath. So we are gonna take a quick break, but come right back because we wanna wrap up with Laurel and get a little bit more tips on how do we stay healthy and stay well. that little break so I could get myself a little bit more composed. 
But one of the pieces, Laura, that I have some challenges with is consistency, right? It's figuring out how do I do this every day or as frequently as possible to stay fit? How do you do it? People make time for what's important to them. So your sure. health should be important to you. So you need to schedule like working out or taking care of yourself just as how you would schedule any other appointment in your day. Okay. So you have to make a conscious effort to get in your appointment book and say, okay, I'm going to work out between three and four. Now keep in mind, if you don't have an hour of your day, half an hour, but you got to really utilize that half an hour. Mm -hmm. So schedule your workouts just as you would schedule any other event in your life. Mm -hmm. And so when do you exercise every day? See, I'm a morning person. So I'm up at 3 o'clock. You know, I have an hour where, you know, I kind of put myself together. I get my meal in. And then I get to the gym about 5 o'clock. If it's a 24-hour gym I'm going to, I'll probably be in there around 4 o'clock. So in 4 a.m., 5 a.m., it's my, my window. Mm -hmm. Now, there's so much information out there about what the correct type of exercise is for different people. What would you recommend for someone who's not necessarily interested in figure modeling, but who wants to stay fit? Like, is it okay to just walk around the block? Or is there like a time period that we should exercise every day? What does that look like? Honestly, the time period, whatever best suits your schedule. Okay. Because if you find a time that you can work into, that's, you're more likely to get the workout in. Right. Workout wise, the type of workouts that you do is the same advice, what you enjoy doing. If you don't enjoy resistance training, don't force yourself to do it because you're gonna do it for like a week and you're gonna get fed up with it and you're gonna to wanna to drop it. Right. So if there's an activity that you actually enjoy moving that gets your heart rate up, do it. If you're into the Zumba, do your Zumba. If you know you want to do an actual like ballet class, a dance class, do your ballet. If you like the resistance training or you want to do CrossFit, do something that you actually enjoy doing. Right, 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 right. So, you know, Laurel, what's next for you? Well, next for me, I'm hoping to go back onto the Olympia stage. Okay. So, um, which would be my second time. So I'm going to go right back into competition prep, try to win a show to get back onto the Olympia stage um, in September. Wow. So that's pretty soon. That's pretty soon. So I probably have a, one or two, maybe three competitions before that and then before I hit to Olympia. Okay. So straight from the annals into Olympia. So no carnival for you this year? No, there are some sacrifices I had to make. Okay. That's the hard part for me. <laughs> the sacrifices. Really and truly, I'm so thankful for you taking the time to come to talk to us, to share a little bit about the work that you're doing on yourself mm -hmm. and to share how we could work on ourselves in the same way too, to be a little bit more fit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these days we find that there are so many people who are dying at really young ages, 40 from a heart attack, 38, 50. And it's largely because we're not really taking stock of our health and we're not taking care of ourselves. I think Laurel, your story today really inspires us to think about how can we stay fit and how can we stay consistent. Thank you so much. You know, one of the key things that we didn't mention before is that you should always check with your physician before you engage in any level of exercise, just so that you know what is right for your body. That's the critical thing. Um, staying in care means going to your doctor, taking care of yourself, exercising. Let's create a healthy Caribbean community across our diaspora. You know, we are one Caribbean, one people, one culture, and one nation. Let's stay fit, Carib Nation.